morning is hymn 304. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And saying together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say the song of praise together as well. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And you may be seated for the reading the lessons. The first reading is from 1 Kings. Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes. The leaders of 
the ancestral houses of the Israelites before King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the, the Ark of the Covenant to the Lord and to out of the city of David, which is Zion. Then the priest brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. And when the priest came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping heart the covenant that you kept for your servant, my father David. As you declared to him, you promised with your mouth and have this one day fulfilled with your hand the throne of Israel. If only your children took the look to their way to walk before you as you have walked before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your would be let your would be confirmed which com promised to your servant my father david but with but will god indeed dwell in, on the earth even heaven and the highest cannot contain you much less the, this house that i have built regard your servant's prayer and please O oh Lord my God, is heeding the cry and the prayer that you have, your servant prays to you today, that your eyes may be open bright and day toward the house, night and day toward the house. The place serves prayers toward the place. Hear the plea of your servants and of the people Israel when they pray toward this place. O oh, hear in heaven your dwelling place heed and forgive. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people Israel comes from a <coughs> distance, from a distant land because of your name, for they shall hear of your great name and your mighty hand and your detached arm. When a foreigner comes and prays toward this, foreigner calls to you, so that all people of the earth may know that your nature, your name, and fear you, as do your people Israel, and so that they may know that you, or your name has been invoked in this house that I have built. The word of the Lord. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 84. If the congregation will please respond on the half verse. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has desired the longing of the words of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoices in the The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your Happy are they who dwell in your house. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs. For the early rains have pools of water. They will climb from height to height. And the gods Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Behold our defender, O God. And look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room. And to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. 
and he will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. The epistle this morning is from the book of Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against the enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, Put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, Keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of our Lord.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to us to open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our hands to do your will. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Ah. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Tom Kettner. I come from originally from Michigan. In 1978, I moved out to Wyoming and have been here ever since. I started as a teacher in, as we, I was reminded this morning, I called it William Wyoming, or Bill. It sounded a little more uh, hoity-toity to say William. And uh, my wife and I have been here since. And uh, so I tend to, my wife tells me I talk too loud. So I've got this mic on because I was a teacher. But I'll try and keep it down. I'm also used to wandering around, but we have a camera, so I'm going to stay put. Have you noticed that this is the fifth week in the Gospels that Jesus is talking about the bread of heaven? And last week, we talked about it at our church in Douglas and said, enough is enough. So I'm going, to be, I'm going to be talking more about Ephesians and Paul. You know, this time that we're living in right now, they use the word unprecedented. I don't like that. This is an intensely difficult but not dynamic time that we're living in. Many folks, though, are worn out because of the energy being spent. Where they're frustrated and discouraged and angry or scared and worried. It is a difficult time to be alive and to be human. To share our planet right now is hard. To be human, to be humane, is to look for connection, for compassion, and for our courage. This dissonance that we're feeling, that's the energy of these contending voices, the loudest voices right now, are egging us on to think maybe of only ourselves, to pit us against them, to choose sides. There's the sides that have our rights and the political you know, well-being of the country and this immediacy that we have to take control right now. But then there's the other side of wholeness, of common humanity, and a long-range look at the future. So to leave our homes every day it feels that we need to put on our armor, like Paul says, the whole armor of God. But today, our armor seems to be masks and hand sanitizer and vaccines. And to leave the house, sometimes, like my mother who's back in Michigan at 88, she hasn't left but a few times. It's a bit scary. And so, whatever we do, to live is to battle. We battle under many different flags. In all of our battles, there are actually, out of all of our battles, there are actually two that I, I believe that are the major ones. The first battle that we are, are fighting is a war of conquest, which is a war to even heat the blood of the most timid and shy in, of us. Because one way or another, we all fight to conquer, and we all fight to conquer. What we all fight to conquer is the world, not literally the world. Perhaps we may be fighting the world for our dream. For the most part, our goal is a more realistic one than to battle the world out there like Don Quixote. It is a realistic one. We battle and try and conquer just to find a place in the world a place in the sun, our place. We feel that we must conquer a territory in a time and a space that is given to us. I felt that when I mentioned talking about teaching out at Bill. That was my place to begin in the world, that battle to find my place. If that is the goal, though, this war to conquer that we all wage, there are also adversaries that we have to fight with, with whom we have to wage it. And they are adversaries of flesh and blood. They are human beings just like each and every one of us. They're fighting a war as well, toward the same end that we are. Our, we fight, and, the, and that world, world, or the word, of course, is 
The battle that we're really fighting for, let me stop. I'm reading, I, I don't do well when I read. That battle that we have in the world comes about because what we're trying to do is find that place for myself or myself and my family or myself and my country, the battle for myself and my race. But see, when you get down to the brass tacks of everything, the war that we fight with the world is basically fighting for myself with all capital letters. To use the metaphor of Ephesians that Paul has, what is the armor that we wear when we fight of this battle with the, war, with the world? Not certainly the whole armor of God, but the whole armor of man. Because this is a man's war against other men. In such a war, perhaps, you wear something like this. You gird your loins with knowledge, the sad knowledge of the world, which knows that dog eats dog, and that God helps those who help themselves. Or charity begins at home. That war, that, that we, or that uh, girdle that we gird our loins with, that knowledge, sometimes gets in our way. We may also put on the breastplate of self-confidence, because if you have no faith in yourself, you cannot, and you can't trust your own wits, then you'll never go anywhere in this world. Let your feet be shod with the gospel of success, the good news that you can get about anything you want if you fight and work hard enough for it. Above all, take the shield of security. Because it is a perilous world outside these doors where anything can occur. Security is perhaps what you need more than anything else when you conquer and battle the world. The security of money in the bank or a college degree or some basic skills that you can always get back, fall back on and take care of. And then finally, you put on the helmet of attractiveness, or if you're not a very attractive, maybe a helmet of personality and wit. That is how we battle the world. Yet Paul speaks of another war that we talk of, that we're reading in Ephesians today. But there is another war that we fight, of course, all of us, and this one is not a war against flesh and blood. For we are not contending against flesh and blood, the letter to the Ephesian reads, then against what? What worse is there to contend with against in this world than other men? The principalities, the powers, the world rulers of this present darkness, the spiritual hosts of wickedness in, this heavenly, in the heavenly places, Paul writes. <coughs> oh, excuse me. The other war is the war not to conquer. This war is not a war to conquer, but a war to become whole and at peace with ourselves and our sins. It is a war not of conquest, but of liberation, because the object of the other war, of this other war, is to liberate the dimension of selfhood, which has become, in some way, has become lost. The dimension of selfhood that involves the capacity to forgive and the will for the good of not only myself, but for all selves and all people. This war is a war to become human and to, re to reveal and find the divine humanity within each one of us. This is the goal that we really are after, and that, that God is after for us. This is the goal that power, success, and security are only a poor substitute for. This is the, the victory that not all of our human armor can, can protect us from. Self-confidence, knowledge, personality, that can't always win for us. Not simply to be treated as human, but to become at last truly human is our goal by putting on the whole armor of God. To tie that in with the gospel today with Christ, with Jesus saying, 
You must eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. That is a beautiful way of saying, within you, I am living. My spirit, the divine spirit of Christ, is in you. Paul says in, Col in Colossians in 3.11, part B, there is only Christ, and he is everything, and he is in everything. That's you and me. And so when we think about putting on this whole armor of God to truly become human, to become real and authentic Christians and people, that is what this Ephesians is talking about. Sometimes we get lost in the imagery of, of being a soldier. So to change that a little bit, I'm going to finish up with a story. I don't know. I, I, one of my favorite R&B singers who just passed away recently, Bill Withers. I don't know if you know Bill Withers. He sang, Ain't No Sunshine When She's Gone, or Lean On Me. My favorite is Grandma's Hands. They did a documentary when he was in his 70s, and it was called Still Bill. And Bill was talking to some children, children who had speech impediments, stutterers, severe stutterers. And Bill told them this. He says, when I was growing up in West Virginia, I had a severe stutter. And he says, I knew when I left the house, I was going to be bullied. I was going to be picked on because of that stutter. His stutter lasted until he went into the Navy. But Bill told these children, he says, I know the war you're fighting with outside, that wall, outside these doors. I know what you're going to face. People are going to pick on you. They're going to bully you. They're going to disrespect you and think you're not very smart because you stutter. You can't get your ideas across. He says, I know that. He says, but what got me through my growing up is my grandma taught me that when I leave this house, I have to go with prepared forgiveness. I love that term, prepared forgiveness. Before Bill left that house, he knew he was going to have to forgive people. And he was prepared to do so. That's putting on the armor of God and becoming a real human being and finding that divine within so, as we look at everyone here and everyone outside these walls, I've got a question for you. We're all imperfect. We're not perfect. How do imperfect people love each other? How do we stay together for so long because we're imperfect? How do we love each other? We forgive. That is the armor that I want you to take away today. As we leave these church door, out these church doors, go with prepared forgiveness. Because that's what the world really needs right now. Amen. And now let us stand and say together the Nicene Creed, found on page 358. Oh, is, or is it? Oh, no, that's the prayers of the people. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of unseen through God. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Jeannie. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our, need, our own needs and those of others. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. I give to you my own peace, I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. And on page 360 in your Book of Common Prayer, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. You have not loved us with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Who's doing the announcements today? I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> well, we don't know if we have any announcements today. We can ask. Are, are there any announcements for the, the good of the congregation to be made? Okay. How about birthdays? How about anniversary? Uh, Birthday? Let us pray. Watch over your child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. And pick you up when you fall. <laughs> and in your heart, may I peace which passeth understanding abide all the days of your life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Happy birthday. My wife's birthday was yesterday. And she turned 64. She's making that known. And she said, she sang that Beatles song to me, Will you still love me when I'm 64? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I will. <laughs> Any anniversaries? So we have our offertory.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of inter interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for your sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return through prophets and sages. You revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood be reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets and apostles and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And he said the blessing. He broke the bread. And he gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Isaac and Rebekah, God of Jacob and Leah and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world around us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts with faith, with faith and thanksgiving. Okay.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
Thanks.